Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life. And today I'm going to be telling you about the curriculum that we have chosen for Katie for 11th grade. started, I just want to go ahead and let you know that this video is not sponsored. All my opinions are my own and we have purchased all of this curriculum ourselves. So none of it's been donated or anything like that. So I'm just going to go subject by subject and let you know what we've chosen and why we've chosen it. If you're interested in what we did in 10th grade, I'm going to go ahead and link that video up top. Um, I just recently did a video about um, Katie's 10th grade curriculum and kind of reviewed it at the end of the year. Katie's also in that video and lets you know what she thinks about all of our choices. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start first with math. This year, Katie will be taking calculus. We're going to use um, Dr. Shorman's calculus. I'm going to go ahead and put a link up top to a detailed video review that we did on Shorman math. And um, that will go into a whole lot of detail, but I'll just briefly tell you about it here. So Shoreman Math is an online math program. Your child will log in. Um, they will, um, whatever math program that they are using through Shoreman, they will um, read the definitions and read any kind of lesson that they have. There's a video lecture, and then there are 20 problems that they complete. Um, there are quizzes usually on Friday, so there will be like four lessons in a week and then a, um, a very short quiz. It's usually four or five questions on Friday. And then there are quarterly exams. The quarterly exams are given in a school week. And in that school week, there will be three lessons. So there will be two practice exams and then the actual exam in that week. So you have four weeks that only have three assignments like that. And the other um, weeks in the course are going to have... Um, usually five days with one of those days being a quiz. So you can very easily double up the quiz in a lesson and do it in four days if you want to do that. The math courses are usually 30 weeks long. You do have a lot of room in there where if your child struggles with math and needs more time, you easily could um, break some of those lessons into multiple days because of the fact that we normally homeschool for at least 36 weeks and you're only dealing with 30 weeks. And again, you are able to double up um, on those quiz days if you want to do that. So we're going to be, um, I'm going to go ahead and answer a question about why is Katie in calculus? Um, because some people are kind of adding up the years and saying, how can that be? Well, Katie started out doing um, Saxon math and um, she did pre-algebra in seventh grade. She did algebra in eighth grade. And then in ninth grade, she did algebra two. And Saxon and Shorman work in a similar way where once you complete Algebra 2 and Algebra 1, you also get a credit for geometry because geometry is integrated within both of those courses. So in ninth grade, she did um, Algebra 2. That year, she was able to take a credit for Algebra 2 and geometry. And then last year in 10th grade, she did pre-calculus. So that's how um, she is landing in calculus for her 11th grade year. Um, calculus isn't required, but we do need a math, and she's perfectly capable of doing it. Math is one of her stronger subjects, and um, we are thinking for 12th grade we will probably do a dual enrollment in a local college for college algebra. And for calculus, we also plan to do that as an honors course, and usually what I do for honors math is I also do a project. A lot of times I like to do statistics projects because I just feel like kids don't get a lot of statistics in high school, and I think that's a great way to be hands-on with statistics. So I usually come up with a statistics project where there's some research, they have to actually do something to create data, and then they use st statistics to analyze the data, write a paper, and then present that paper. So that's the way we're going to be doing an honors um, calculus project. Next, I wanna talk about science. We are going to use Shorman Science. We're going to be doing chemistry. Um, we absolutely love Shorman Science. I'm gonna go ahead again and link a detailed video review that I did on Shorman Biology so you can get an idea of how those classes go. 
but um, I'll go ahead and talk about chemistry now. With Shorman chemistry, it's going to be very similar to the math. You log in, you either watch a video lecture or you read some information or you um, answer some questions. There are four quarterly exams at the end of every week and there's usually 32 weeks in the science classes. At the end of every week, there is a lecture the lectures on video, and then if you choose to, you can do the, um, the labs hands-on by getting the lab kit. This is the laboratory workbook. You can pay for this in addition to the, um, the course, the, the fee for the course, but this is included for free um, in the course if you want to print it off on your own. It's not that big. I usually just order it because it just saves me a step. But anyway, this is the lab manual. And basically, this is a workbook that they use whenever they're doing a lab. They're going to watch the video. They're going to complete the, um, the lab manual while, while they do it. Um, it has a place for everything to go, and it also has instructions. Um, I will have Katie do a term paper with this. I will have her do um, 15 formal lab write-ups. There's 28 total labs, and that's how we will get an honors credit from this. Okay, so this is like Christmas morning here. This is our lab kit for chemistry. You can see it was it was an expensive lab kit, um, but it has a ton of stuff to do all of these labs. You can see it came with a bunch of glassware, um, two of these huge um, burettes. It came with an organic chemistry, like molecule set. It's got two different ones. It also gives you some random things you probably had around your house, like styrofoam cups and things like that, mortar and pestle, an O-ring. We've got some um, test tubes, all of these kind of things, um, an alcohol burner, and then it's got all of the chemicals that she'll need. Uh, it also comes with like an instruction sheet, so it just tells you like what you need um, for each lab and what you'll need to provide that's not included. So I find that really helpful. We do like to do the labs hands-on, and um, it's, it's really great to be able to do that. And you can just kind of set up your computer, and, um, and you can have the, um, the computer lab playing while you're doing the lab, and it makes it so much easier. I will say that Katie is super excited for chemistry, and um, she was <laughs> like really happy that there were no dead animal specimens in this box of supplies. So she is super happy about that. She did not really enjoy dissections in biology, but you pretty much have to do that <laughs> when you take biology. For language arts, we are going to use The Good and the Beautiful Year Three if it comes out. Um, I'm not really sure why it's getting later and later every year, um, but they are telling me now that it will be out sometime in September. So, and I'll link a video up top for one of the other years. We've done year one and year two. I really, really like it. Um, it's, it's just really good. It's got a good focus on grammar and writing and also literature. They also include geography and art appreciation in their lang language arts courses. So I really do like them. I think they're very good. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is um, I don't feel like they've really prioritized their high school materials because, like I said, we struggle every year just to get the product before we need to use it. The way the Good and the Beautiful um, Language Arts works is they've got high school year one, two, and three. They abandoned high school year four in favor of a, a one semester American literature course, a one semester British literature course, and a one semester creative writing course, thinking that you can kind of pick and choose what you want there. That is not going to work for me because in my state, um, and really in most states, most colleges are looking for a full year of British literature. So what I did is I called the um, Good and the Beautiful year one, we did that in ninth grade, I called that a general literature year. And then this year, year two, we made that an American literature year. And if you look at our um, 10th grade review, curriculum review um, that I linked at the beginning of this video, and I'll also link that in my description box, um, you'll see what we did to make that an American literature course. Um, and then this year we're going to do British literature. So in my state, to make it an honors course, we need to have 12 papers and we need to have 12 novels. Now The Good and the Beautiful comes with five novels and then in addition to that, I'm gonna add seven more. And those seven extra novels are where I make it 
uh, British literature focus. So The Good and the Beautiful comes with 10 units and five novels. It also comes with the Grammar and Writing Guide. Now you will, not need, you will not need to buy this every year. This is used for all four years. Also, the geography cards that you can get, um, like if you buy year one and you intend to continue using it all the way through, those geography cards also are used for every level. So you'll only need to get those one time and then you'll just need to get like the year two or year three after that just so that you can get um, the workbooks. So I'll put a picture of what year two looks like up here. I also have um, like some unboxing videos of um, um, the good and the beautiful year one and year two. Um, so I have a, uh, some more detailed videos on those courses. I will link those in the description box below as well, just so you can get an idea. There are no pictures at this time on the website for the good and the beautiful for um, year three, so I can't show you that. Um, but basically, they are very well done um, little workbooks. There's 10 workbooks and you go through it and it tells you what chapters to read in the books that are included. Um, it gives you some um, information on the author that wrote the book. It gives you some information on the area they lived in or the area they're writing about and includes geography that way. It also does a lot of art study, um, different types of art, whether it's impressionist, different types of artists. Um, and then it also does a lot of grammar and editing practice and things like that. And it also has writing projects in each one of those um, 10 units that you'll do. So it's really good. So what I'm gonna show you now is what I'm adding to it for the honors um, course. Now the Good and the Beautiful does require or say that you should add additional novels to their course. So it, it you wouldn't just do the five novels and the workbooks. You would add probably at least an additional three novels to make it a full high school course. And they talk about that in the first um, unit. Unit one always kind of tells you like how does the course work and um, what you need to do. And they call that a reading challenge. So it's just extra reading that you assign. You can assign it whenever you want to, and you can choose what novels you wanna put with that. So if I were gonna do a college prep course, I would add three. And because we are doing honors, I'm adding seven. So I'll go ahead and show you what we're adding. All right, so we are gonna focus on Shakespeare. So this is A Midsummer Night's Dream. We're gonna add this. We're gonna add Hamlet, and we're gonna add Romeo and Juliet. We are also going to do Jane Eyre. We're going to do Pride and Prejudice. And with Pride and Prejudice, we're also going to do the honors book study that The Good and the Beautiful has. This is a $5 download. And so I went ahead and got this just to give her a little bit of direction with that book. I thought that would be helpful. So um, we will make that part of her honors um, project to do this. And then the last book that we're going to do is um, a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And the last book we're doing is Paradise Lost. I almost forgot this one because we haven't actually received it yet. Okay, I also want to go over with you the novels that are included in The Good and the Beautiful Year 3. Now, if you go to Year 3 on their website, you're not going to see anything there. It just says coming in 2020. But if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see a scope and sequence for their high school. And on that scope and sequence, it does list the books that are going to be included with The Good and the Beautiful Year 3. The first one is The Good and the Beautiful Classic Short Story Collection. Um, and then The Little Duke, uh, Vasya, The Good and the Beautiful Drama Collection, and The Poetry of William Wordsworth and Other Romantic Poets. So those are the five those are the five books that are included in The Good and the Beautiful Year 3. So for French, Katie's going to continue with Fluence. That worked really well this year, and she plans to continue using that for the rest of high school. She's just going to continue moving forward. Um, when you buy Fluence, you have the ability to download separate levels, or you can um, get a little bit of a discount if you buy all the levels. There are a total of five levels that equate to um, three years of high school French. And so Katie's just gonna continue moving on. That has worked really well for us. You do download it on your computer and then you just sign in, you complete the lessons. Um, it's interactive, it constantly assesses. So you have a grade every day that the student signs in to do work and you can just record that um, for your uh, grades. 
And usually what we've been doing for foreign language is, is adding in an honors project that involves some research, some sort of project, and writing a paper and then presenting the paper. So that is likely what we will do um, for honors this year, unless we can find a local French speaker, in which case we may try to do something with that and let Katie practice um, French. That would probably be a better way to do an honors project, but I just don't know if we know anybody that we could work that out with, but that would be ideal. Okay, next is going to be an elective, and that is computer science. Okay, for computer science, we are going to be using CompuScholar, this is an online program. We have no experience with it. We've never used it, but it was recommended to me by our accountability group. The course that was recommended was a basic computer usage skills class called Digital Savvy. Um, I think this class is going to be super easy for Katie. Um, it basically covers just computer basics, um, including even social media, email, introductory website design, um, and a little bit of programming. Um, Katie is actually very interested in computer science, so she actually also is interested in taking web design and also maybe some coding classes. So there are some introductory coding classes, and they even have some that are more advanced. So um, right now, our plan is to go ahead and do Digital Savvy this year, and then if this goes quickly, like I think it will, we'll probably also add the web design class. So it's $120 for a one-year self-study course. Also shows you the course syllabus on here. Okay, so it has um, each chapter, it tells you approximately how many days and what it's going to cover. There are 25 um, chapters. Okay, so it the course covers 164 school days and each day represents one typical class period of 45 to 60 minutes. So they're saying that they would typically work three to five hours per week. Okay, it also says that lesson quizzes and tests are auto-graded and um, there are hands-on coding projects in every chapter and the projects are teacher or parent graded um, with a rubric provided. Okay, next is world history. We are going to be sticking with master books for world history. Um, this is the student book. Um, Katie really enjoyed using the Master Books American History this year. Um, so the student book basically just has the reading. Um, they are short um, little lessons and Katie found them very enjoyable for um, American history. So she really, we actually thought about dual enrollment this year. Um, but, but Katie really liked the American history book so much that she really wanted to do the world history. So we're gonna use this for world history. It also has a teacher guide. The teacher guide does not have the student text in there, so you could not get away with just buying the teacher guide. Um, it has all of the assignments in here, and it also has exams in here and then answers to exams. So Masterbooks has a suggested schedule in the front. It makes it really easy to know how to lay that out for your schedule. There are a total of 34 um, chapters, and each chapter is set up to do in one week. And there are four days of reading, and then there's an exam on the Friday or the last day of the week, however you set up your schedule. And all of the exams are essay questions. So there are also essay questions as far as assignments during the other days. So you do some reading, and then you answer the questions in essay format, and then that helps you prepare for the weekly exam. So I'm really excited about this for Katie because I think this will help her prepare for college with essay um, questions and things like that. The American history is set up totally differently. So there are um, true and false and multiple choice questions after every single um, day when you do the reading. And then there are four quarterly exams, which are also primarily multiple choice, fill in the blank, true, false, that type of thing. Where this doesn't have any of that, it's all essay questions, but the answers are provided. Um, so you do have answers a lot of times when you have essay questions um, they don't give you the answers, so, but this one does, so that's good. I'm really excited about this, and Katie is too. I do intend to make this honors. We will do the course as written, and in addition to that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Good and the Beautiful level three and four, which we already have. I'm going to select four to six of the projects that come out of the year 10 to 12 Student Explorers, 
And just depending on how much work is involved and how long it's going to take and that sort of thing, I'll choose the number of projects and those will be the honors projects that Katie will do in addition to doing this. And that's how we will achieve an honors, um, an honors course for world history. I will go ahead and link a video up top when I, where I talk about how to create an honors class and what is meant by an honors class in high school. Okay, and the last thing that we will do this year for Katie's school is we will do ballet. I'm just gonna call that ballet, classical ballet three. So we have counted um, ballet as a fine arts credit every year. Katie does a, a lot of ballet. She gets between four and 500 hours of ballet per year. Um, the guidance that we were given in South Carolina is that to count a course like that or karate or any of those types of things that you want to do, um, you need a, about 150 hours for a full high school credit um, and then 75 hours for a one semester credit. Um, that's also a good rule of thumb to use for like a PE class. Um, you're usually just gonna count hours for that. We also will make that an honors class by adding in her productions that she does. Um, I also have her do self-assessments at the beginning, middle, and the end of the year. So that's kind of the writing. So um, again, I, I linked that video on honors, but usually there's four components. First of all, an honors class needs to be above and beyond what the regular class is. Um, and usually there's going to be four components to the above and beyond part and it will be reading, writing, a project, and um, like a presentation or performance. So I use all of her performances. She usually has at least eight a year. So I list those for performances. For um, reading, I usually pick a book for her to read about ballet um, or I get like a definitions book or something like that and give her a quiz on those. But I have her do a reading assignment and then for writing, I'll have her do self-assessments at the beginning, middle, and the end of the year. And then um, for the project, what we do is she assists um, little kids, like in kindergarten classes. She's like an assistant teacher, and we use that uh, like volunteer time as her uh, project for um, honors ballet. So that's the way we do an honors ballet class. If you have any questions on any of the curriculum that we are using, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions on homeschooling in high school in general and would like me to answer those, please also leave those in the comments below. And also if you have any ideas on other things that you would like to see about homeschooling in high school or homeschooling in middle school, let me know that as well in the comments below and I would ha be happy to create those videos for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.